Like, don't look at me like you don't know that that's the truth also. She said that in a talking, yes. head, like, in the show, like, not yes. a preview? to the camera on purpose. Do other people not have sensory issues about their necks? Because I if I have shirts that the neckline is too high, it makes me want to fucking lose my mind. If Oh, it drives me fucking nuts. Oh, my God. You know what we have to talk about today? For real, for real, for real. Okay, what? No, I need you to talk about okay. your your um your bra experience at um Target. Oh, my God. I oh made a God. TikTok about this the you other day. I did, yeah. Oh. Very, like, stream of consciousness. I'm trying something different on my TikTok because oh, what is I it? am exhausted with, like, highly produced content. Because, like, we're just doing a lot on the channel. And it's really annoying to me the expectation that I would be, like, making content on TikTok or Instagram that's, like, thought-provoking. And, like, no. hosting. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Well, it's hard in the therapy space because other therapist oh. influencers are constantly fucking, oh. like, like, let's talk about these really deep, heady conversations on every platform about different issues. And, like, I don't have the emotional capacity for that. Just like plain and simple, I do not. Also, sometimes like I know it's important and I know like, but like some things are not like everything doesn't have to be that deep all the yes. time. Like sometimes it's really yes. good to have like brain candy yeah. and like good brain time off. Yes. Brain yes. time off, brain off time. Well, um, I feel like, yeah, that's kind of my frustration with like the yeah. therapist influencer niche sometimes is that like we don't have to be thinking deeply at every moment yes. of every day for the rest of our lives. Because no. like that's not really good for our brains either. Like, I don't want to be doing deep introspection about every aspect of my humanity every moment yes. that I'm awake. You know, yeah. like sometimes I just want my brain to be quiet. That has to be exhausting. That would have to be exhausting. <laughs> it's exhausting. Yeah. I don't like it. I'll, but anyways, yeah. So I made a TikTok yeah. about the bra thing. We can talk about that if you want I would to. Love to. Yeah. Because it was a very, I think especially yeah. for you because mm -hmm. you have, you've been having to shop at um like specialty yeah like, like online specialty. mostly yeah and then or if you went to that um the like where you have to like get an appointment to go yeah. do like a bra fitting and stuff yeah 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 it's like um, a whole thing but also too can we talk about the fact that the only specialty store here in lot here in town you do have to like get an appointment for yeah. and whatever but also anytime that i would go they'd be like we have these three things that will oh, fit and you always... and we can order something for you and yes. have it in two weeks and like I don't want that. Like no, I it's want so. A bra, I want a bra now. Well, and that was the thing that was frustrating about it too, is that it's hard finding clothes as a plus size person, and it's hard finding clothes as a person with really large boobs. I can only imagine. And having both of those things be contenders on top of the like gender dysphoria and like not wanting to wear things that are like super femme or like especially you know like Torrid seems to have two speeds where it's like either <sighs> you're like a receptionist no, and like literally. you're very ashamed of your body and want to wear very yes, bright and pink. Hide floral everything. everything yeah or you know you want to wear like graphic tees and like, like skinny jeans it's like very you know like like millennial core which yeah. is fine like it's a perfectly valid fashion that. choice but it just doesn't resonate with me and so it was like it felt like this never-ending difficulty <laughs> with clothes and bras so anyways all of that to say one of my goals from the beginning of yep, my that was, that was reduction that's what you told the doctor i really wanted to be able to buy a bra at target because yeah. it seems fun you know um, just like casually go and like buy a new yeah, yeah how, like how being able to you? buy a bra at like just a regular old store that you can walk into is wild to me because I I you. haven't been able to do that since I was a child like I would sometimes be able to find bras at Kohl's when I was a kid yeah um, but when was the last time was that like also when was the last time you shopped at Kohl's well also too like I remember buying bras at Kohl's in high school okay but none of them fit me because and I like didn't know this at the time because I hadn't learned oh. about proper bra sizing but like my boobs would fall out of the bra off i bent over yeah. or like moved too much god none of those bras fit me yeah yeah for those of you who don't know there's a subreddit called a bra that fits that has a calculator that's what i've been using for like most of my adult life yeah um and it's really helpful especially because like when you get to a certain size you have to buy bras based on uk sizing um why is there just not one like how i don't know it really, I don't know. It really it feels like the railroads, me. but yes. if no one had ever gotten involved yes. and we had like just different, like, can you imagine yeah. if all roads were different sizes no. or like, the, no. like the thing everyone has to wear, like yes. every human on the planet yes. for the most part, I guess. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah. wears clothes. Well, and especially when your boobs are big enough that they like interfere with your daily functioning, like going braless wasn't an option for me. No. Not only because like 
boob sweat is terrible. And I can't imagine like, the sensory. Yes, in the but summer. also because like quite literally, it would be like painful for yeah. me to not wear a bra. It wasn't even a question of like professionalism or like you know being conservative or modest or whatever. It was just like yeah. straight up not a realistic option for me because it was so fucking uncomfortable and painful. But like for some reason, we just don't agree about the sizing matrix. Isn't I, that irritating? I if I just we would be like men would be unclothed. Yes. If we but could also, just buy a medium large XL XXL yes. XXXXL. One know, like, of my one of my friends actually pointed something out to me that I thought was really interesting because I was ranting in my voice notes as I do. I know sometimes I'm like I'm like are we because your voice is like always on in our house whether I'm like editing a video <laughs> editing or like it, yeah I'm like yeah is, is, is that a voice note? Is she doing a voiceover? <laughs> like, who is she talking to? I was like I don't like do yeah. I get involved? Is this the phone? <laughs> no. Um, yeah. No. Yeah. I was ranting in my voice memos as I do. And my friend was talking to me about clothing sizes and whatever. And they brought up a really good point that um, men's clothing sizes are somewhat standardized because they needed to be clothed to go to war. They developed standard sizing matrix uh, for men's clothing to go to war. so they, they could clothe you to be sent off to die. Which is like. Thanks. Kind of fucked up. Like, it's still I very guess. much a privilege that, like, men's clothing are standardized in size, Great. but also sort of fucking bleak when you think about it. Though. We only have standardized clothing so that we could die Easily at least clothe the good. Pe- clothe the people who were yeah. being sent off to die. Die in uniform. Yeah. 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 Huh. That's pretty sad. That's a new one. Yeah. <laughs> I had not heard that before. Um, huh. But anyways, yeah, all of this to say, I went to Target earlier this week because I wanted to buy a sports bra. And like, first of all, I think it's a crime that Target sells things that are called sports bras that have no meaningful compression or encapsulation for your breast tissue. Like athleisure has so taken over that there's no, like where are you supposed to buy it? Like just talk about, just talk about them. I don't know. I don't understand. I posted this on my TikTok because I was like, where are you guys buying sports bras? Like what are the rules? I don't understand. I think the other part of this that is hard for me also is that I don't like wearing Razorback anything. Razorback Because it hurts my neck that's when it instead of being like straight straps in the back they do like this number the crisscrossy thing got it got it got it that hurts my neck and like activates a lot of my chronic pain so i just don't like that um understandable so that's also an issue but truly i only found one bra at target that was actually a sports bra that would like compress my breast tissue yeah and it was sized way smaller than the rest of them the largest size that was available in store was like easily two sizes too small for me. Except that I tried on one of the the like athleisure ones and it was like too big. I had to size down. See, that's what I don't understand too. Is like, like what so, are the rules? Like you're only allowed to exercise and work out if you are thin, apparently, thin and don't have. But also, breasts. fat people like, should go to the gym and lose weight. Yeah, so like, which is it? Like, do you want fat? This is just well, I don't back get to it. Like when people are like, oh, it's like, it's not the same or, yes, or it's yeah. all the same for everyone. And it's like, like no, no, because I can't even buy clothes to go to the gym if I Literally. wanted to. No. The other thing that irritates me too is that like Target is doing this thing where they've removed all the plus sizes from the store and they tell you like, oh, you can just buy them online. Except that thin people get to try stuff on without having to purchase it also, first, but fat people don't. So you can buy one thing, wait for it to come, pay for shipping, by the way, oh, of course. wait for it to come, try it on. And then if it doesn't fit, then you have to return it. Yeah. And then you buy another thing. You wait for the money to hit your account. So like, you buy another how thing. Un- how much time has gone by by the time? But also you've... like if you're not wealthy or if you don't have disposable income, you don't get to do the thing that thin people do, which is try on six, seven, 17. eight things at one time and go home with two or three items that yeah. like actually work for you. Oh, you, if yeah. you don't have the money to do that, then you just have to buy one thing at a time and wait and then buy one more thing and then wait. I'm it's ass. And again, too, like, I am so thankful that you have all this information. I know. About bras and how, like, like thank God you know about SheFit already. I know. And, yeah. Um, I'm excited for it because your bra should be getting here this week, right? So, Not until no. Friday. Oh, no. The shipping on SheFit is ass. I'm really annoyed about it. You can pay, like, 15 it fucking American dollars. American company? Or? Yeah. You can pay 15 fucking dollars or some shit to get it shipped with, like, like three to four days it's or something. It's a piece of clothing. Like that's so. I don't know. Um, Overtone is the same way where the shipping, even though the company is located in Arizona, by the way. Overtone um, is located in Arizona. Uh huh. I learned that, that the other day. You My bought hairdresser that one, told took, me that. And I was like, hello? It took you weeks to get, like your hair color At had basically three faded. Weeks. Yeah. By the I time missed, it came. Yes. We went on vacation one time and I wasn't able to get uh, oh God, hair dye here. right. Because I didn't order it two weeks in advance. I ordered no. it one week before we God, left. God, yeah. And it didn't get here in time. Oh. Anyways, that's not necess- that's not uh, <laughs> relevant. The point that I'm making about the bras is that I went to Target, I couldn't find a sports bra, and I was like, well, I've wanted to buy a like real bra because um, I've basically just been wearing like little stretchy, you know, like and you look so cute. Tankini things. Why would you not? 
I really like them. But I was like, yeah, I want to buy a bra with like cups, you know, like an underwire and like clasps. Like, yeah, and, like yeah. In... So I was like, consolation prize. I'll buy a real bra while, so you have while to figure I'm out here. Your size again too, obviously. Yes. But the thing, this is this is why this is relevant information that I am so proficient with the like a bra that fits calculator is that for the entirety of my adult life, I've been using that calculator to buy bras online from like specialty places that fit my boobs before. Yeah. So I'm very familiar <laughs> with what my You're rib cage measurement system. is, yeah. especially. My breast size decreased by a fair amount, but my rib cage is the same, right? I haven't really gained or lost a meaningful amount of I weight. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't think. I, I don't think um, so. I, don't think I mean, so. I did and I don't think because when I measured my rib cage, it's the same as it was before. So that would lead us um, to believe. So my bra size before the reduction was a 38 double H, I think, in UK sizes, yeah. which in American sizes is like a 38J or some shit. But my band measurement, again, is the same. The For those of you who don't know, when you wear a bra, the thing that goes around you, the actual band part of it, yeah, that, that like, measurement is, is supposed to be your rib cage in inches, right? In Obviously, in other countries, they use centimeters and things like because that. Because, of course. Yes, but here in America, we use um, inches. And so that's that measurement. And then you measure the fullest part of your bust and whatever that measurement is minus your rib cage measurement is your cup size. So if your it band is 38 and your bust is 42, that's four inches of difference, right? So one, two, three, four, A, B, C, D, you'd be a 38 D. You basically like go through the sizing matrix, like one, two, three, four, and that's how you find your bra it size. It seems very simple. It's very it seems simple. very straightforward. Right? So I didn't know what my cup size was, but I knew what my band size was. So I was like, great. I have like an uh, approximate estimate yeah. based on like the little stretchy things that I've been wearing and whatever. So I was like, let's try like a 38 D 38 double yeah. D. I tried a 40, uh, a 42, I think like in all sort of varying cup sizes. And when I tell you that not a single one of them was like, even that, close to clasping around possible? my body. How's that possible? I don't understand. Like what sizing metric are we using? Cause also I'd like to point out mm. that none of them were the same size. That's the thing like that if I had laid them all mind. down on the floor in the dressing room, they would have all been different lengths, except they all claim to be 38 inches for the bus measurement. And the, and you said again, too, they were also some of those were within the same brand. Weren't yes. They? Yes. So like, like, are we just and none of them fit, but all of them didn't fit for different reasons. Yeah. Which was infuriating like and the, so confusing. I'm like, did you like, just what get are the rules? so astronomically unlucky that you went know. to the Target that I got all the like I feel like I'm I mean, being gaslighted. Target on the outskirts of town, I guess, but like I refuse it, to believe they're mass yeah. producing stuff with no. such wide... variability. Yeah. I don't know. Because how could anyone ever buy clothes? It was especially fucking irritating to me because basically, I mean, I walked away with nothing because I was like, there's really not anything in this oh, store. I don't think that would even yeah. fit me because by that metric then, I don't think anything even really got close. Like the, the clasps on the back were at least three, four inches apart, like not even anywhere close to my spine, you know? Yeah. So in order to get a band size from that target that fits me, I'd need like I guess like a 46 or a 48, like almost they a even 50. Have one of those no. no, yeah. No, I think that the largest band size that they had was 44, which like might have fit, but I really sincerely doubt it. Yeah. So like I don't know what the rules are. Because that's also but, too, I think the other like I would say I would say you're like closer to straight size if anything, but then too, but then mm -hmm. like still like how yeah. is anyone? I don't know. Like, well, that's the thing, too, is that, like, Target pulling get... plus sizes from the stores means that, like, for me, as a, like, person who's, you know, on, like, the... Mid? Or, like, in, what's the... In the plus size community, they call us small fats. Uh, yes. <laughs> which I think like, is baby fats. So funny, yeah. I love that. Um, but, like, I can still fit into some, like, uh, straight size yeah. matrix clothes, right? But if I were basically any fatter than I am, nothing at Target would fit me, basically. And, like... Which is so fucking, like, not it's fair. Weird. Also, too, which always cracks me up, too, because, like, didn't Old Navy do the thing, too, where they had, like, the plus size yes. thing? They, and they like, went rolled great. out. Well, first of all, they rolled out this whole plus size thing. Yeah. They did a bullshit job of marketing it. Okay. Um, And it was still, like, pretty well received. It was, like, pretty positively received. Yeah. And then they were like, mm, nobody's buying it, so we're getting rid of it. Like, like you can buy it online instead. But also to the fact that stuff was always out of stock. Yes. But also like, like this is the thing that like as plus size people, we're very aware of what stores fit and, and what stores don't course, or like what be? stores carry things in store. Yeah. And so if you're not doing a good job of marketing the fact that this is a big change, like this is all new, you might not have been able to shop here before, but you can now. 
fat people aren't just going to show up at your store and no. like in the hopes of like, well, maybe one day, like what? no one would do that. No. And that's asinine, you know? So like if you're not doing a good job of marketing to plus size people, but then no one's buying your stuff, it's not because there's not a demand for it. It's because you didn't do your job as a retailer yeah. to inform me that I can shop there now. Also, my impression is they're like making like 10 pieces of the clothing and they're like, uh, they're sold out, you yeah. know, like, and it then feels you just that never... Way. That's the thing that really chaps my ass is that the clearance rack is always full of the extra, extra smalls and extra smalls. Yes. And like, first of all, the fact that we carry those in store and like Why seemingly no one is buying them. And yet the plus sizes are always yes. sold out online and in store. We sort of ranted about bra sizes for a minute. Yes. Sorry. But that's okay. Um, it's, an important, it's also like something you haven't gotten to experience. I know. We are going to make an update video about my breast reduction because my boob is finally fully healed. The run is coming. Thank the God. run is coming. I know. I yes. just want to go for a fucking run before we I talk know, about my... So bad running away from you. I was oh, very envious had, of you. We had such a sweet little not notebook because notebook is problematic. What's like a not problematic romantic movie? Is there one? Probably not. <laughs> but anyways, um, because I was going, I was going on a run, yeah, and you then you were doing your sweet. walk, and yeah. um, I was like, oh, what if I just go this different, this different way today that I, I don't normally do? Yeah. Um, and I was like, oh, I wonder if I'll run into Mickey, yeah. and then you're like, oh, I wonder if I'll I run into Aaron. Thing. Yeah, you also we went did. on a different way. Yeah, I don't, that you don't normally, normally walk and we that both just kind of. The... Yeah. Oh, it's my dad. Shout out to my dad. We do want to have my dad on the podcast eventually. I think that'd be amazing. Um, we just need to figure out you the think timing Mickey's a good of all of that. I somebody left a comment on this week's main channel video that like me rubbing my temples or something was like funny to them yeah. and it actually made me a little emotional because that is so very much oh. a mannerism that I've uh, gotten That's from my father. So fucking true. <laughs> and the hand thing. Oh, spinning you always make fun of me for spin- the yeah. hand thing. It's so cute though. It's so endearing though. Like, yeah, I think it's funny. Yeah, I think, I think it's, it's also sweet. awesome too because I've known your dad for so long. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's just like a very, like he just has the best mannerisms. He's a very emotive guy. Totally. It's yeah. so much fun. Yeah, like yeah, he can tell a story about fucking nothing. Yes. And I'm going to sit there. Yes wide-eyed and yes. fucking listening. Any of the mannerisms that you guys think are funny or interesting about me, I probably inherited Mickey from my stole, father. <laughs> stole. Yeah. Um, do you think mannerisms are passed out? No, that would just be like just learning them from yeah, your Yeah, yeah. I think it's like an absorbed primary caregiver. Like a learned behavior thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what are we actually talking about today again? We're talking about Love is Blind. I want to start by showing you a TikTok, actually. Okay. Um, we can just cut this in in post. But I think it's relevant because it's about like people who like reality TV. Okay. Okay. Especially because reality TV gets such a bad rap for being like vapid and silly, you know, and like especially yeah. like the it's not like real media thing. But also too, like I think us alone yeah. are doing the work yeah. to change the I hope so. Because like think of all the great lessons that we yes. have learned yes. from watching reality TV. Exactly. Okay, you let know? me play you this TikTok and then we'll talk about it. Play it for me. Maybe I don't know where I saw it, but somebody said the smartest person you know watches reality tv now i personally you're the smartest person i know because when i tell you there's not a single season of love is blind that i'm watching without a book to accompany it look if you're watching these shows with me we're gonna refer to the source material we're gonna check on our sources you know what i'm saying by the end of it we might be having a powerpoint presentation night about our findings we're doing research it's field study it's yes. field study. It's anthropology. That shit's so fucking true, though. The, like, favorite take that I have now about reality TV is that it's essentially a study in human behavior. Also, too, like, every time we go back and watch an old reality show, we're like, wow. You know, like, sometimes, like, human yes. progress feels so slow. I know. And then you go and watch a really problematic show from and the 2000s like, or something. And oh, my like, God. We have made, like, so much. Like, we're not, calling, and we're not calling gay people the F word anymore. You I know. know. Like, yes. on TV. Literally. Yeah, Fuck. that's not an okay thing to fucking say yeah. anymore. Yeah. Um, wow, that's amazing. Yes. I know. And I think especially, to the sexism aspect of it, that, like, reality TV generally speaking, is more popular with women and femmes than it is with men, especially like cis men, yeah. right? And so it gets delegitimized as a form of media that is vapid and baseless. And, you know, it's like, blah, 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 blah. it's like, you know, there's no substance to it, except that it is, right? And it's also like the gossip thing that we've talked about on of the channel course, before, that like course, course. gossip is a protective behavior for communities, which is largely a behavior that's engaged in by women because we are the ones who are communicative and who create this network of connection and yeah. community that we use to inform people of like, 
who's dangerous or like you know new goings Things, on and red community flags norms. to watch out for or yes, like yes. also too but then like you see, always see these tiktoks of um people posting their um like spouse or partners or whatever like yeah creeping yes. and trying to watch the show exactly and then, yes. because it's interesting i Who used to be that way too and i was like i'm just gonna fucking watch it with you yes. like it's good like if you, you want to watch well. it just also it's so it's neutral fun. It is fun. Yeah. It's such a neutral thing to do. Mm -hmm. I just don't mm -hmm. understand why you wouldn't want to watch. Like, yes. it's so exciting watching a glimpse into other people's lives, yes. which is why it's popular. Granted, it's cheap exactly. and easy to produce. Yes. Okay, the other thing I wanted to talk about, I lost my train of thought, so we're just moving on. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about in today's episode is the Jeremy thing. Oh, we have um, to. We have to. Oh, you didn't do your bit. I didn't do my bit. I brought my sunglasses and everything just to make a point of like how, <laughs> how ridiculous how it ridiculous is. it is. And I understand like being hungover and stuff, but I've never been so sure. Also, it just feels so rude and closed off. Because it is. I think like let's just for real, for real. Like if I'm sitting here like this, also, um, I, I am wearing a hat and I don't normally wear a hat. Like <laughs> okay, yeah, for real. If anyone ever at any point gave gave you shit or gives you shit for yeah. getting a bad haircut and you want to fucking rip down the walls in your house. <laughs> like you are fucking valid. Yeah. You're allowed to feel, to I, feel bad, not to rip down any uh, walls. <laughs> uh, but I, I always say like, it's not a hard cut to do. Yeah. I really loved my haircut that I had. Yeah. And I said, just this, what it looks like. And just a little bit less. Everyone else has always had no issues with that. Yeah. Never had a problem. And I fucking knew from the first razor cut or from the first, yeah, the first when little she, swipe of the When she started the, the fade, flippers. and I was like, I'm fucked. I was like, I should have just got up right then and there. Uh, and I didn't, and it's fine. My hair grows back quick. Mm -hmm. But I, for the first time, I was actually emotional after getting a haircut. Yeah. And it fucking getting, sucked. Getting a bad haircut is really a blow to the ego, Pumpkin. Oh. It's really difficult. I can't imagine. Especially women's cuts, too. Yeah. People are so already so yeah. judgmental. I know. And also women are a lot more aware of like. I know. I think the problem with my haircut, too, is that it is technically fine. It's not like so bad. It's not so fucked up that like everyone would oh, know. You know oh, like, it's oh, not like, oh. It's like not like it's, botched. It's but just it not what you wanted. I look in the mirror and I'm like, that's not Aaron. Yeah. That's not it me. It doesn't feel like you. Yeah. I don't like it. Which is worse. I don't like it. But anyways, yeah. The whole thing though, it just feels so closed off to sit here with sunglasses on. Yeah. Like, the hat is like kind of like indifferent to me. It's like neutral. But, sure, like, whatever. inside the house, fully yeah. closed. After being out all night? Yeah. Uh, like, also, I'm really wondering if he was still drunk while he was having that conversation. I, I, I think he, I, I mean. Because we sat and watched the episodes back afterwards. We just had our little pizza night and talked yeah. about it. And I'm curious now. Because he didn't look like he was. His eyes. Well. No, yeah. I would definitely say, like, definitely wasn't so. If that was the same night or the same that morning, mm -hmm. then now. Um, I just don't see. Like, I just can't. There's, like, a level of uh, privilege and yeah. entitlement. Yeah. With that attitude that, uh -huh. like. Also, like, my thing, they should be, like, the NRE should be fueling these relationships. Yes. Like, they should be it, obsessed it's off the with charts. each other. Yes. Like, I yes. just can't imagine even, like, And the resentment you, is, like, at an all-time high. Not that it's ever fine or anything, but, like, sure. if I was out that late, like, I would have, like, a hundred reasons why. Yeah. Also, like, that would just never happen. No. But also, at I least just can't. At least not without communicating with me. I just can't imagine. Because in my mind, they should definitely still be, like, we're probably not, like, shitting in front of each other. We're not pissing in front yeah. of each other. We're yeah. not, like, farting and, like, sure. doing the things generally you do when you get comfortable really with Because the relationship's really new still. They're way too new to be doing any of that shit. And yeah. so to, like, come home after drinking, it, the day of the week is kind of irrelevant, but, like, also sure. it's, it, like, it would be You care about it, yeah. I'd be, I mean, like, if you're getting fucked up on a, on a Tuesday. Yeah, like, what the fuck's yeah, going on there? Yeah, and, like. You're and to be fair, we're very domestic in that regard. We're sort of old, fair, old married couple like in that way. Cats in mm -hmm. that way. <laughs> but also, too, with your new partner. Yeah. I think that's the thing that always uh, kind of makes me laugh about like new marriages <laughs> and new things and like yeah. i think this is the thing too where like the ball and chain and like the people oh like yes. men just have such a fucking hard time with is that like the emotional and the companionship and like yes. the commitment of it yes like why pivoting, is that so like, hard for you these people that come the generally the men to use binary that sure. come on this show are just so ill prepared and it's like they put no thought yes it's like we're just zero we're just like planning we're just like, okay, this is going to be better than Tinder. Yes. Because I'm guaranteed, essentially I'm guaranteed like the whole Matthew thing. Like yes. I'm going to find myself like a mate <gasps> or something basically. It's so gross. Yuck. But like really though, they're like, well, at least here, like I'm guaranteed to find someone who's yes. going to like me, right? Like I can't well, be that bad. And also like Jeremy said that and admitted that when he met Laura's oh, parents. I forgot about that. Yeah. He said I, the he thing said about the like thing. how bad could it be because all of these people are also here to find and someone who's married. checked. Yeah. And yeah. like- 
are taking it seriously Hello? here for the same thing. And like, I know what dating for men is abysmal. No, sure. Yes, and of I'm course. Not, but also like, not because like for the wrong reasons. Like we talked about it on the last time. Yes. Well, yeah. and we talked about this while we were eating pizza and just like recapping the episodes together. Yeah. I have and a theory. I know. Please take your glasses take, off. Tell me your theory. It stresses me out. Tell me. Um, I have a theory about the men on these shows because specifically Love is Blind because we have talked before we about talk. how difficult um, or like, you know, and like online dating generally, like app based it's dating It's built to sucks. be unsuccessful. Yes. Like, let's they, just make that very clear right now. They don't want you to find somebody. They want you to come back and spend money. Because, yeah. Because they can try to gaslight you into spending for their like, you know, monthly memberships or whatever. <laughs> Cheers. So like, yes, online dating sucks. It's pretty fucking depressing for most people. However. Um, but I think the thing about these men is that they don't seem to have like really thought through why their experience is difficult on dating yes. apps you know like okay so usually there's this perspective on behalf of these like types of men yes. that like dating on apps and stuff is so easy for women because like you can uh, hundreds you know, of likes yeah and... yeah you could get any guy blah 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 whatever right except that like first of all the people that are swiping on you and like you know that are in your tinder likes or whatever are not all people that you want to date let alone people that are like safe you know yeah or like even in it for even kind of like yes. marginally the right yes. reasons or like to see but, who sees you as a person yeah no exactly that's the problem too is that i think a lot of these people also view women on dating apps like like a warthog and you're like being it's like you're being ripped apart by a bunch of lions it's like a really uh, violent experience I've heard honestly you use that more than once now and it's yeah. upsetting both times but yes. like it's true it's that's what real, it though. feels like like yeah, you're like, like you're a, a, a piece of prey that's being yeah. ripped apart by a bunch of wild animals and it's not fun right like men's perspective that women get a lot of attention on dating apps and it's like so fun and blah 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 like yeah. sure sometimes it is i guess there's like an ego aspect to that but like for the most part it feels very dehumanizing oh. it's very uncomfortable and a lot of it is very misogynistic in nature and also that like just because you're getting more at or more more likes from people who are dehumanizing you and view you as a whole to fuck Literally. doesn't mean that you're having a greater success in finding a long-term partner or experiencing healthier positive relationships i don't think you know we had a dollar for every rancid oh like just so quickly yes they turn rancid yes You'll like, you'll message somebody and be like, hey, how's your day going? And then they'll send you something lewd or, or gratuitous. Yeah. Or like, God forbid, a fucking unprovoked dick pic. Or like. Just like so gross. It's it's not a fun experience. But yeah. I think the thing about this, though, is that like, OK, so we've established all of that. Right. Okay. But I think the men come in with this perspective that like uh, women have so much fun on dating apps, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And they also have never experienced what it's like. That's what we talked. Yes. To get yes. that much attention on a dating app. And so going through this experience where multiple people like them is like this high that they're not equipped to deal with at I don't think, all and because so, they've made no effort to think through yes. this experience beforehand so then when they're in this love triangle situation they're like i don't know how to choose yeah. somebody this has never happened to me before and also i'm like you know power drunk on all of this attention and i oh love God. that all yeah. of these people are hanging on my every word and want me to choose them and so they don't know how to like engage ethically. Yes. And and then they end up making these decisions where like, okay, sure, whatever, they pick somebody, right? But I don't think that they were really ready to let go of the power yeah. that they had, which is why I think people like Jeremy end up doing this like this double agent thing it is, yeah, it where is like, like you're thing. lying to her you're lying to her you're like doing all of this like two-faced like bullshit the classic, trying to take two people to prom kind of yes. a, like stereo or yes. stereotypes trope, <laughs> trope and so then you like get yourself into trouble and it's almost like a surprise pikachu of like yes. well i thought this would be fine like i didn't think this would blow up in my face which like seems stupid obviously but i think it really is because of this like yeah. lack of foresight and, and I, this lack of like uh, I don't know, care or concern for like how to conduct yourself ethically yeah. when you're not in a scarcity mindset. And I think too, that's why that TikTok is so relevant and interesting yes. because like dating shows in the past and stuff. And mm -hmm. I think like just the fervence now, I think too, especially starting from like the first season of Love is Blind. Yes. Like where we are now. Uh -huh. And I think just like as dating yes. and finding a partner, like especially like cis hetero like yeah. relationships and stuff. Yeah. How more difficult has become and also yeah. too like for real like fuck tinder and dating apps oh because like I, I feel like they have done an un, <clears throat> a number. an un 
measurable amount yes. of harm yes. and damage to like <clears throat> the dating and like the general like the like attitude about well being it. Yeah. of people. Um and I'm not saying like men are like being disadvantaged or anything like that or whatever. No, no, but no, like no, yeah. you're so right though. Like the hyena thing, like no wonder there's this like fervent but oh, see and also to then I go back to like no people are just fucking trash. But well I think, yeah, like, I mean I think there's an aspect. But I think of shows that. like this really capitalize too on this like also, too, um, something we were talking about the other day, too, I just I'm so curious mm. what it looks like then when so essentially like for most millennials who are like the generally the demographic yeah, for this show. I would say so. Yeah. Um, like 2004 or 2004, 2000. <laughs> And like the Y two K shit, yeah. the world almost ending then. Yes, the world almost ending in two thousand twelve. Oh my god! Yes, two thousand eight and the financial crisis. Yes. two thousand sixteen and Trump, COVID. Yep. Yeah, um, like those are just the couple things off the top of my head. Just like <laughs> these, these disasters, grand, like traumas, essentially, yeah. like we've that experienced we've survived. as a generation. And so we have like this like delayed adolescence almost going on. Yes. So oh my god, we, we were talking about this in the car. Yeah. Yes. And so when we get in these positions, yeah. like these it's just um at least with my experience too yeah it's just people are using the apps to use people like people want to get what they want yes. out of it yes um and i want to talk it about jess here soon too yeah um because i watched we i saw one we saw one tiktok from her and i was like i fucking can't stand her mm-hmm. i and uh-huh. i think this is such an important moment too for us is that like we are so happy to change our minds and opinions yes. about people. We should last really episode, normalize that. Last episode, we were championing. Yes. Champion, championing. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to say it, but we were, we were rooting for Jess. Yes, like we were she, Jessica Stan. She said the thing, all women deserve to be able to get yes. to say to shitty men. Yeah. Um, and now I'm like, I can't fucking stand you. No. And I can't wait. I know this episode will be up a little bit after you've already yeah. watched it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm so curious to see how this shit goes down. Mm-hmm. Because if it's Me from too. anything like from the previews we saw. Yeah. Like I. Not good. Not, I my impression, and I'm gonna say this for me, mm-hmm. is that, and I know I'm gonna assign a lot of no, okay. it's not nothing bad, but I really feel like she got on this show uh-huh. to get a husband essentially, sure. and I I feel like this was a cloud experience for her. <laughs> I I feel I was like especially where you were going with yeah this. because especially too after the like after you dissect a little bit more after learning more about her now yeah, it sounds like yeah it just feels like because immediately to go back on TikTok now after going through this experience that you weren't even a part of. Yes. Like you didn't even have a have skin in the game. No, I know. And like, is this was this just your ticket to yes. like getting to like, become maybe? Yeah, like being another Lauren and Cameron. It kind of feels that way. I Lauren think, and Cameron, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Lauren and Cameron are the only like yeah, but just, real successful but just couple. chasing the like yeah. more screen time kind of a thing. Yes. Well, and we also talked about how her social media presence is very. Like, not giving girls girl, right? Yeah. <laughs> Especially um, with, like, the preview. We ended up watching the preview at home. I didn't watch it live, but I've seen the preview for, like, the mm-hmm. coming up or whatever. And if that's true, that there's, like, some kind of involvement between Jimmy and Jess or whatever. or The like, way they have it previewed, they would lead us to believe. Well, and then also people were talking um, on stream about how Jessica and Laura had a conversation at a bar. You didn't see this. Jessica and Laura had a conversation at a bar about... Um, you know, like, oh, do you think Jimmy would still be interested in seeing me? Oh, just, and Laura they, was like, oh, definitely. On the show? Yeah. <laughs> See, Laura and, and Jess were on the show just like chit chatting. And basically, Jessica was like, oh, do you think that Jimmy would still be interested in seeing me? And Laura's like, oh, definitely. Yes. Which also, like, can we talk about how you're encouraging someone then, maybe in, in an implied way, yeah. to be a home wrecker in someone else's relationship, but then being surprised Pikachu when somebody else did it to you? Also, like, too, this is what I'm saying about the not a girl's girl thing. Yeah. Like, that's so disingenuous. Also, too, it's so sad to boil it down to, but I feel like that probably just stuck in her cross so fucking bad because you're right. She probably has been used to getting her way. Yes. Like, yeah. We uh, talked about this off camera too, that like, I, especially after seeing her social media presence and the way that she's conducted herself, I was hoping at the time that she was talking about her physical appearance during that speech uh, as yeah, like, we, you know, oh, you know, like, you know, people are imperfect, we hope right? Be- we do try to see the best <laughs> in people. We do. And it's it does so get, naive. we do get got because of it yeah. sometimes. Um, But it seems like that might be more indicative of this belief that she has that she, because she's conventionally attractive. She's owed. Well, and I think that has afforded her some social power that she took for granted. We talk about the capital thing all the time. And I think because in this experience, she wasn't able to leverage 
that social capital it's to like, get what she wanted. Show? Well, I think it's it's a blindness. Like quite literally, oh. I think it's like an unawareness. You know how we joke sometimes about like, you know, it wasn't manifestation. It was just white privilege. Oh, yes. It's All that, right? Like yes. some people really do walk around with this expectation that like, oh my gosh, I'm just so good at manifesting I'm so things. Lucky. I'm so lucky. Yeah. And yes. like, no, babe, it's white privilege, right? Or like, yes. it's just privilege generally. You yeah. you had the card stacked in your favor. And then when you pulled the final card for your royal flesh, you're like, oh, I can't yeah. believe it. And like, yeah, it's because you had four of them yeah. to begin with, you know? So I think she might have been under the impression that when people give her deference or just like let her get or do whatever she yeah. wants, um, that it was just, you know, I don't know, like either a luck or some kind of other trait that she had that afforded her that. And like, the truth is that I think a fair amount of that is because of her social capital and being yeah. a conventionally attractive person. Oh. Um, and because she couldn't leverage that, we were all of a sudden feeling ineffectual and sour grapes. And we used that moment then to try to be cruel and like, like shit on somebody else because you felt small, yes. which is a thing that I just fundamentally don't fucking but respect. But also too, can we talk about, can we fucking talk about real quick in her speech? She's the thing like, Oh, you know, like I don't need a man that I need to be ta I need mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. take care of. And all this yes. big talk yeah. about this, but then also we're going to run back and home wreck a relationship yeah. with, uh, for Jimmy. For Jimmy. For Jimmy. For the guy who looks like the thumb for, from Spy Kids. From Spy Kids. Hello? Literally from Spy Kids. And like um, looks aren't everything. No, but, but... also like the man lacks the emotional intelligence to have a well thought out conversation with Chelsea, at least on camera. But then also like right? has... Yes, yes. And like doesn't really seem to be doing the most in, as far as like validating and supporting his partner. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Doesn't seem to be particularly good at acts of service. Doesn't seem to be particularly good at quality time. Doesn't really seem to be doing a whole lot of anything really in his relationship to, except for nagging it. Chelsea. Yes. But but somehow he's like the most attractive person that you've ever that Jessica, you've ever met. Yeah. Jess needs to go. Yes. Uh, like, but also can we also talk about too the at in the same breath too his friends sitting there dogging on him because he requires <gasps> someone in their words yes. to push air into his lungs to keep him alive. Yeah. Like that While man should be them. groveling at Chelsea's feet with like yes. NRE and yes. Uh, not that it's a good thing, but fucking enmeshment and, uh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and dependence. Yes. Like, he should that's be obsessed my, with her. Yeah, that's my impression of this. And yes. so, like, I think that just further goes to prove, like, also to them throwing around love and, like, Ooh, we are it saying the L me. word way too fucking it quick in these shows. Me. That's um, just me as a person. But, like, I... Not, like, gatekeep love, obviously. No, no. But, but like, I've had whole existential crises about, like, what is love really anyways? Yeah. And how do you really know? You oh, know, and, absolutely. like, here are these people just after eight days being like, I love you. And I know that the experience is unique yeah. and it's not something that you can quantify if you've not gone course, through it and all of the caveat, caveat, totally, caveat. I totally can validate that. But it does also seem too fast. I it just seems like maybe what we're experiencing is infatuation and we're calling it love. Yes. You and know? I also think too, um, and we're talking about this a little bit with Jeremy, mm -hmm. who's the one, I'm gonna get their names right at some point. Jeremy is the sunglasses one. Sunglasses guy. Sunglasses guy. Yeah. Um, I think this, to me, it's like, so we talked about the entitlement earlier a little yeah. bit, like with Clay and like having Ooh. his business be farther away and stuff. And AD just being like, hey, can we like spend the night together? Yes, I want to sleep in the same like, house as what my a low fiance. Bar. I know. When I'm telling you, like these people are not thinking past, like no. just getting past, like what, what would your impression be <laughs> of like spending? What did you think getting married was going to fucking look I like, my dude? I also think it's so interesting too now. Yeah. I feel like in the earlier seasons of Love is Blind, because we also joked about this too then, is like these people still aren't real, in li real life. No. Because no They're one's working. They're living in paid for homes yeah, by the no production working. company. Yeah. I don't remember anyone working still regularly in the other seasons, maybe. I don't remember. But I feel like everyone still is like very much n now still having to have their jobs and yeah. like can't yeah. do the thing where we're like we're just away from work for weeks at a time. Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. also too, I think that's just an interesting take on like the economy. I know. <laughs> just for my own but i just like i don't know what their impression is of being like in relationship with also too if we're being know. for all intents and purposes people who are already like the bar is so low for them on what yes. they are looking for yes like what they're required to do is yeah. a male partner yeah and still somehow we're saying that you're asking for too much yeah like it's what so offensive it's offensive is what it is i just don't understand how like you know basically the the bar is like don't lie or cheat on me. Yeah. Spend Sometimes. almost, you know, every day with me, at least some time with me every day, at yeah. least. Um, and like, don't actively be emotionally abusive to me, at least most of the time. At least most of the time. 
And still somehow all of the men on this season are shitting the bed at those expectations. I think too. I like, think hello? Why the gossip and like if more men watched reality TV and we like made it more of a regular thing, like I feel like people would like understand like processing emotion, maybe not understand, but like could at least <clears throat> like some awareness we could, like, of it. Fathom. I think that's too like watching it with chat and with everybody yes. is so important because like yeah, we're I learning things together. Yes. But also too like someone learning like, wow, everyone really, okay, this is going to be the pair, this is going to be the pair ring thing, pair ring thing. The diamond ring, the ring, the shape of oh, ring the everyone shaped. hates. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not really something I was privy to, but then like yeah. everyone being in chat, like, yeah. be like, oh my God, See? never buy a fucking pear shaped yes. ring. And Unless then you know that that's what somebody, somebody wants. Totally. Right? Like that's totally. fine if that's what somebody likes. Um, but like again too. Um, but as an out of, out of nowhere and choice, it's very interesting. the next week finding out someone bought their soon to be fiance a pear shaped ring. And I'm like, what are you fucking doing? I didn't say anything. It's not my business. You yeah. never know. Sure. But um, just like things like that or like how yeah. to operate and function in a relationship because yes. I feel like it would be so more like because I, I really think that I'm like these people have to have watched other seasons of this show, right? Oh, like, yeah. They have I would to, hope so. They have to have some They have to have some awareness of it. Yeah. And I feel like it's like little traps. Like they set little traps that are so obvious. Like they're like yes. speed bumps coming from 10 miles away. Yes. And like we're still All like. All you have to do is slow down. Getting still. piss ass drunk in a in a situation where all the people from the pods together also that's yeah. just so dirty from the producers like i know love the I drama hate but hate the we're like emotionally manipulating people yeah. for the purpose of making like, content for what? like why do they need to be on there which is so hateful like why do we need to have a barbecue with everyone i don't know we don't especially like the preview of the upcoming barbecue with like jess and sarah ann and everybody like, being why does there everyone like need to be why there? why yeah. are you fingering people's emotional wounds for right now the other thing that I think we should talk about too is, oh, I lost my train of thought again. Pumpkin, I feel that. Hello, hi. I got sick and tired of my shirt, so I took it off. It's okay to have sensory issues. <laughs> Thank you. The other thing that I want to talk about is the delayed adolescence thing that you mentioned earlier, because okay. I don't think we circled back around to it yet. Probably didn't. Um, but I do think there's an interesting conversation to be had about how childish, <laughs> especially the men are yeah. on the show. Like the messiness oh. thing is kind of what we talked about. Ah, uh, yes. yes, yes, yes um, yeah, yeah. Talk about it. Because about we it. sort of touched on it earlier with like the way that millennials have been forced into thank adulthood. You. Yeah, right? thank you for bringing us back. Uh, <laughs> like with, you know, like. The adulting the, thing comes to mind. and like Yes. Well, yeah. And like there's a lot of online like memeing happening about like you know being a 28 year old toddler and all of this stuff and whatever yeah. right and like in a way i think there's <laughs> i do think it's valid because like you know our generation especially like we got sold this lie oh, that if you face. go to college and high achieve and you know do everything right yes especially this generation of people who were parentified children from the beginning right Literally. like go to school get a college degree be high achieving get all of the gold stars and collect all of the trophies and your life will be so much better than ours right yeah. like you won't lose all of your financial security at the age of 30 40 something and you'll get a good job and like you know you'll be able to pay off your student loans with yeah. whatever income that you make Take I out remember, as much as you want I remember them telling us like you know if you take out student loans to become a doctor like you can pay off your student loans with your first year's salary in a couple years yeah you'll, yeah you'll be able to pay them off in the first really year so even. Quick. yeah except that like nobody told us that the everything, interest rates were going to be predatory and as everything fuck. Would cost a bajillion dollars and that by the time we finished school that all of our wages would be not in um alignment with inflation and, our, and like yeah. the cost of living and all of this stuff so like we really got sold this lie that like if we just high achieve enough then our lives will be really great yeah and it pushed this generation of very parentified children to become even more adult and like grown up than we should have been at that yeah, age, you know, yeah. which then has led to a lot of people in, you know, like our age bracket, like the late 20s, early 30s, yeah. mid 30s, doing this like reclaiming of our youth. The, like third thing. or life crisis. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I've seen a people, I've seen call, people call it a quarter life crisis. Yeah. Um, which feels really accurate, you know, like people realizing oh, basically I did, that like, I did, yeah, I mean, I we've both own. done this, yeah. right? That like, I don't want to be mature. I don't want to be, be messy. grown up. Yeah. I want the opportunity to have been messy and you know irresponsible or childish yeah. or especially the rise in um intentionally child free people um oh, is definitely. like directly correlated to that i think I don't like see how it could not be i've been a parent enough like to done my it. own parents or to my siblings or to myself even been there, I'm, done that. I'm done i don't want to yeah. be a parent anymore right and so there's an aspect of that that seems to kind of come out in these people where like especially the men like we talked about how they
they are just like power drunk with finally having yeah. options, like more than one option at a time. Um, but it does also seem like the thing where like, I'm not ready to give up all of this power. And also I'm enjoying getting to be childish the one, the one and messy. Like, also like fought for, or like mm-hmm. not fought for, but like sought after. Yes. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I think people like Jeremy, because they've done, I mean, seemingly no meaningful introspection about themselves or their identity or like, you know, their own wounds or whatever, they use that emotional overwhelm as a weapon to then victimize people like Laura, which like, let's be clear, I'm not Laura's biggest fan, but still like, you know, basically giving yourself a write off to go cheat on your fiance and like turn on your notification or your location and assume that no one will notice. And just like, you know, fingers crossed. Here we go. Hope for the best. It is a very like childish thing to do. Absolutely. You know, I think too, as, and especially too, as someone who like at the, uh, like, when we started being polyamorous too, mm-hmm. as someone who dated entirely too many people at once and entirely like took too on many. way too, like it was a lot, just way more than I was <laughs> it's capable really of or ever both. should have eat, like yeah. completely irresponsible. The pods are so interesting because it's like the one time, uh, I guess like for all lack of like a lack of a better term, like straight sure. people are allowed to date multiple people at the same time, yeah. <laughs> you know, because I feel like there's this yeah. like air of like secrecy. Like I get it a yes. lot. I've seen it a lot where it's like polyamorous people date multiple people, but the difference is that we just tell everyone. Yes. And we're like ethical Whereas, about like, it. Whereas like with cis hetero relationships, there's like yeah. this air of like once you're dating someone, like you guys are single and yes. not single, but you know, um, exclusive. exclusive. Yeah. Yes. But then like there's always this like, oh, having someone in your back pocket and like yes. this. Well, and how do we uh, bring up the exclusivity conversation? Yes, and all this. Whereas, like, if people were just being honest, because I always, mm-hmm. they used to always crack me up when people being like, oh, I could never be polyamorous. But, like, yeah. you're just doing the same thing yeah. as polyamorous people are as yeah. you are being single. You're just not telling any of, like, I don't yes. think I've ever met anybody that wasn't also dating other people. Yes. At the same, like, if yes. you're dating That's to a very also, normal part of dating app yeah, culture it, is that, like, in order for you to get to the point where you're exclusive with someone, you have you to do, have that conversation because yeah. otherwise you don't know how many other people exactly. they're dating. Which I know? think is such an interesting, too, it's, like, such a power play from, yes. think, especially from, like, yeah. male, like, the, like... The men on the show. Or, well, I think, like, men in general. Oh, yeah. Um, but it's, like, it's, like, a form of power. Yes. I mean, it's like no, the, it definitely is. This this season, I think, really highlights the, the person who cares the least in their relationship yes. has the most control at all uh-huh. times. Uh-huh. Which is so toxic. Yeah, like, can we awful. please stop uplifting that as yeah. a value that we should ascribe to? Because it's so fucking hateful. Because it also just puts you in a continuous cycle of like one person reaching and reaching and reaching. Yes. And like Which is like Chelsea and Jimmy's dynamic personified. No, and I said he, this in the stream too, but the, go ahead. we're in a competition to see who can yeah. convince themselves they love each other the most. And yes. like neither of you feel that way though. At all. It really seems like Chelsea's draw to the relationship is the validation. I've seen a lot of people comment about how oh, okay. they think think for her there was a dual validation of like being chosen but also in being chosen above the like most attractive woman it's yeah. like a winning thing it's like a winning thing yeah and i and think just just lost yes and is sour grapes so she about got it. sour grapes about it and decided to take it out on him yeah but also that jimmy i don't take it out on her on it like yes well that's the other thing that really irritates me about it too is that she It seems like her ego was bruised, that she couldn't manipulate the situation to be exactly what she wanted, right? She couldn't guarantee the outcome that favored her. And so she got all hurt and, you know, acted out basically like a child. Um, I can't wait to see how this next episode. (laughs) I know. Uh, But then also she is taking down other women alongside her. Like not only because she's, you know, like she said something on the most recent episode about how like, oh, you know, Chelsea is beautiful and incredible and blah, blah, blah and all this stuff. But Jimmy's a man. She said that? Yeah. She's like, but Jimmy's a man. And we all know that, like, if I'm in front of him, then, of course, he's going to be tempted. Basically, the subtext being. She said that, being, like, on. Like, yes, in her. In, like, and she literally like, told. Yes, yeah, she literally said in her talking head, don't look at me like I'm wrong. Like, don't look at me like you don't know that that's the truth also. She said that in a talking yes. head, like, in the show, like, not yes, a preview? to the camera on purpose. Yes. That is not girl's girl shit. And that's what I'm saying. That like her, like the subtext being that like, we all know that I'm more attractive and so therefore that's better so than Chelsea. Fucked up. Like, fuck you, dude. That's so hateful. No, also too, because Chelsea's not, like also too, I even made that, I was like, yes. when she got out of the wardrobe and them doing her makeup and stuff. Yes. Like, when so she much looks more, like herself. Yeah. She's a very attractive woman. I, I. Like, and like also too, let's be clear that somebody's like conventional attractiveness, attractiveness shouldn't have any, any bearing on their 
value at all. Of right? course. But just for the but, sake of getting in the mud with the people on the show. Well, and but also like just to be clear that like this discourse about like Chelsea doesn't look like Megan Fox. Chelsea oh. doesn't look like Megan Fox. Like, first of all, yes, yeah, she does. But second of all, like how misogynistic are we going to get before we acknowledge the fact that we're all lost in the weeds pitting these two women against each yes. other for the purpose of of what? Of Gaining what? approval what? from somebody like Jimmy? Ooh, like why? Also, Did he pick you yet? No, literally. Also, like, do you feel special? Because also, my impression would be Jessica would fucking hate being in a relationship with him too. So, like, what I is don't it know for? Who would like being in a relationship for? with Jimmy based on the way he's behaved on the show? Oh my god, he seems like he's lacking in like almost every major relationship department. He's not, not very like effective must, yeah. at communicating. He's not very effective at emoting. He's not very effective at showing or or giving affection or attention. He's not very effective at being like on the same page yeah. as his partners. So what are you good at? Can you then? imagine if I had, every time I told you I love you, I was just like, I love you. Or also that that was like the most that I would get. Yeah, like. Like, hello? And like, I granted, would die a thousand our, deaths on the inside. Our relationship norms are going to be different than other people's, and that's fine. I'm not saying that everybody's relationship no, needs to look like ours to be healthy, agreed. obviously. Of course. Um, But like, you know, him saying like, oh, I kissed you on the cheek today. So I kissed you today. Like, I kiss you when you leave a room. I'm a, is that like your I mom? tell you, I, I tell you, I love you and be careful when you go from my office to your office. Yeah. Like, you know, I just don't understand the, the expectation that Chelsea is like reaching for the stars Asking for, so for much. wanting her partner who again, she just met y'all oh, should be obsessed with each other literally. for wanting you to care about her enough to like kiss her and hug her and be yeah. affectionate towards her. What? I just don't, I don't understand and I don't relate to the behavior. And I think the thing about it that's especially offensive to me is that all of these people who are like shitting on Chelsea for her looks or like Jessica, who seems to be positioning herself to get involved in somebody else's relationship and like home wrecking basically is doing it for the approval of a man who seems to lack the emotional maturity or intelligence to be at best a mediocre partner. I just like... This is so incredibly disappointing that in the year 2024, the path that Jessica chose is to use this moment where she got platformed as like, you know, this like sort of hero in this moment. Yeah, to, to completely to, un... To like undo all of the... I know, her speech like, is so vain now or so... It feels very different now. It's so hollow. Yeah. It's so hollow. Yeah. Knowing like, that there's, like, no actual heart behind it and that yeah. most of what she said to him is more so a result of, like, sour grapes because she's Cause the not actually had. very feminist yeah. in nature is so disappointing. I just, you it's know. It's sad. This it's, is why you should not meet your heroes or, like, <laughs> idolize people on reality exactly. TV. Exactly. And I know Lesson we talk learned. about, I know we talk about, too, like, hoping for the best and, like, not, and, like, no, trying yeah, to not obviously. judge people by, sure, 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 judge sure. a book by its cover, but then when it, the cover... The, I know when the, the cover contents inside really do matches. match the cover. Yeah, and you're like, it well, sucks. that's kind of disappointing. Yeah. So, as always, it's always good to be able to change your opinion. Yeah. Yeah, do you have any other thoughts on that? I don't think so. Is there anything else we wanted to talk about? I think we got it all. We probably missed some stuff in there. Yeah, so that's if fine. We did, leave us oh, in we the didn't comments. even talk about Brittany and Kenneth. But I think at this point, the episode's already an hour long, so yeah. we'll call it, there. call it there. There's plenty for us to always. discuss. <laughs> We're also planning on making recap episodes about the season as I finish batches of the episodes from streaming yeah so we'll update you guys after we see whatever fuckery awaits in episodes 10 and 11 can we just talk also about how annoyed i am what? that they released the episodes in batches of three uh, the first one was six which is insane insane but then they released three episodes and now we're doing two and then the, the next one will release be will be one and then probably a reunion after that yeah like tell me that netflix doesn't drag the content out on purpose because i'm like i wouldn't want them to drop it all at once i guess but sure. also yeah i don't know but it is just very annoying the way that like you could have dropped the last three episodes at yeah. once and then done the finale or the, the but reunion keeps... but no, i don't know if it's fine. like how people catch up or it really it, it's no, just to drag it's, it out yeah it's just to drag it out they let's be honest especially because there's always filler episodes where like we're just watching oh. them do fuck all or for God the, only like knows how the long. hour long last episode before the altar mm-hmm. one where we're just sitting there i don't know do you yes. think they'll do it maybe they won't yeah and yeah. like endless b-roll of the wedding Literally dress endless. and someone walking in and someone walking out and someone getting ready <sighs> and just like okay talking to the dudes, talking to all the bros we bro get you ready it. to get, you ready to get yes. locked down oh, last day as a single man it's so sad it is it'll be in there i promise that should have been on the bingo sheet. yeah that should have been on the last bingo day as a sheet. single man i don't understand that don't perspective either. like don't get married then. then don't get married if you don't like your partner or you don't, don't like the idea married. of getting married then don't. don't get married like who's holding you at gunpoint hello no one that i saw it's so weird 
Whatever. Anyways, okay, we're going to wrap it there. If you guys enjoy the episodes, you can like the episodes. Uh, you can also subscribe and do all of those things. You can leave us five-star reviews Thank on you. whatever platform you're listening on because that's always helpful. And then that's it. We'll catch you for the next episode, and we love you the most. Bye. Bye.